Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the parts of the circulatory system. So the first thing we need to talk about is the fact that there's actually two different types of circulation. There's the circulation that goes from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. So let's just write lungs here, just so we're aware. And this is called the pulmonary circulation. So pulmonary is referring to lungs. And the other type of circulation is going from the heart through to the body and then back to the heart again. So let's write body down here. And this is called the systemic circulation. So they're the two different types. Now you can see that I've drawn up some blood vessels in blue and some in red. This is highlighting the degree of oxygenation, how much oxygen is present. So obviously, the blood supply that's going to the lungs is going to be deoxygenated, so less oxygen or no oxygen, predominantly less oxygen. Once the lungs deliver that oxygen to it, it's now red and oxygenated and that can then get delivered to the rest of the body. That oxygen releases out of the bloodstream, goes to the tissues, and then we've got deoxygenated blood again. So we go from the pulmonary circulation, systemic, pulmonary, systemic, pulmonary. Now a couple of things when we look at the circulatory system is that not all blood vessels are the same. So what I wanna begin with is we're gonna start here, coming out of the left-hand side of the heart, particularly the left ventricle, we've got this big blood vessel here called the aorta. Now the aorta is an artery. and it's the artery that comes out of the heart that then branches off into smaller arteries that then branch off even further to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the tissues of our body. So what you're gonna find is that this aorta will have various branches. Now, once it branches and branches and branches and the blood vessels get smaller, you then turn into something called arterioles. So what we're gonna find, for example, is that these are arterioles arterioles, which are smaller arteries. And then the arterioles will branch even further into what we call porous blood vessels, so they've got little holes in them. And these are capillaries, and now what we find is we've got multiple capillary beds. And this is where all the exchange occurs. So here are the capillaries. And the thing with the capillaries is that they're the intermediate between arteries or the arterial system and the venous system. So on the other side of this capillary bed, we've got small veins that we call venules. So they're not arterioles, but they are venules. And then these venules come together to form veins. Now you could say that, oh, all arteries and arterioles are oxygenated and all veins and venules are deoxygenated, but that's not necessarily true because in actual fact, arteries are vessels that leave the heart. This is leaving the heart, so that's why it's an artery, okay? This is a vein because it's going back to the heart. But if you look at the pulmonary circulation, it's flipped. This is leaving the heart so that's actually an artery and it's deoxygenated. And that's called the pulmonary artery. And this is going to be a vein because it's coming back in, yet it's oxygenated. So when we look at the systemic circulation, yes, all arteries are oxygenated, all veins are deoxygenated, but it's flipped for the pulmonary. So a better way to think about it is arteries, the A means away from the heart, all right? And veins all go back towards the heart. Now, what this means is simply this. When we look at the flow, it is arteries, then it goes to arterioles, then it goes to capillaries, then it goes to venules, and then it goes to veins. Now what are the differences? Couple of things. First thing is that arteries are very elastic and stretchy. And that's because there's a lot of pressure behind them. Think about it. When that heart contracts, its strongest contraction is gonna push blood into the artery, the aorta specifically. So it needs to be able to stretch under high pressure. So there's a lot of elastic tissue there. But when we get down to these smaller branches of arterioles, they're resistance vessels, and they've got a lot of smooth muscle. So they've got a lot of muscle. And what that means is muscles can constrict and relax. And so they can change the blood pressure, 
right? And the flow. So that's what arterioles do. Capillaries is the site of exchange. And venules and veins, they don't have smooth muscle. So smooth muscle, nope. But what they do have are valves. And so what that means is, when the blood goes back into the veins, because they're of a low pressure, right, because they're as far away from the heart as they're possibly going to be, that blood is going to want to fall back down the venules, back down the veins. So when the blood goes up, as it goes to fall down, it gets caught by these valves. And then the blood pushes back up again, and then gets caught by another valve. And that's how the blood moves through. Now, how does it move through if there's no pressure behind it? These veins get squeezed by our muscles, our skeletal muscles. So when I walk, the veins in my legs get squeezed and that pushes blood back up to the heart. Same happens for my upper body. So what we find here is a quick introduction to the parts of the circulatory system.